breathing does breathing less uh, helps in someone uh, helps in increasing uh, the lifespan like uh, what we see in turtles like they generally breathe only 3 or 4 times a minute yes i, I believe this is the case and I, i never got to complete what i was going to say because it's such a big subject but basically when you begin the process of learning how to breathe at least naturally while doing activities and then gradually learn how to breathe less than normal which is obviously more difficult and you stop doing what most people are doing which is over breathing then you start to get benefits because you start to build up carbon dioxide now unfortunately because of people who sound really trustworthy like the vice president of the united states who told us in 2007 that by 2017 all the major cities will be under water because of global warming which now they called climate change because sometimes places get hot sometimes places get cold i call it the weather but um nevertheless he made carbon dioxide a very bad name even though carbon dioxide feeds our trees it made many people think that carbon dioxide is bad for you but mm-hmm. actually carbon dioxide is a friend in our body and we require carbon dioxide in fact nc paul in this indian book from 1855 actually calls carbon dioxide a main factor in prana because carbon dioxide when it's present in significant quantities opens the blood vessels to the brain and brings more blood to the brain carbon dioxide in significant quantities will open the vessels of your lungs and allow oxygen to transfer much better from your lungs to your blood carbon dioxide in significant quantities also becomes carbonic acid in your blood and that has an effect on the nervous system and calms your nervous system making you feel peaceful and relaxed and one more important one is carbon dioxide is the necessary prerequisite to be in your blood at significant quantities in order for the oxyhemoglobin the red pigment in the blood which carries oxygen to transfer its oxygen into your cells and without it it just simply doesn't do it see conversely if you breathe more than normal you will blow off your carbon dioxide the more you breathe in the more you have to breathe out Mm. every time you breathe out you get rid of carbon dioxide so the more you breathe the less carbon dioxide you have but the less you breathe the slower you breathe the less your minute ventilation is the more you do kumbhaka for prolonged periods the slower you breathe like i like inhaling 2 minutes exhale 2 minutes then the more you build up carbon dioxide but if you over breathe if you breathe too much which is also called hyperventilation which is an element of sickness then what you get is less blood flow to the brain less oxygen from your lungs to your blood you get a hyper stimulated nervous system which becomes a flight or fight response and you also get much less transfer of oxygen into your cells because there is this thing called the bohr effect which was discovered by a scientist named bohr about 100 years ago and what it said basically was if us if our red blood cells could speak and they would come traveling through the body and they might come up to your big toe cell and they say hello everyone i'm oxyhemoglobin i've got oxygen who wants oxygen and all the cells will go we want oxygen we want oxygen it will say show me your carbon dioxide and if they say well uh, i haven't got any carbon dioxide because i've just been to this uh, exercise class where they told me to take deep breath in and deep breath out and make this sound <sighs> it will say so i've got no more carbon dioxide left i blew it all out they'll say well i'm sorry if you haven't got carbon dioxide i'm out of here says the oxyhemoglobin this is called gas exchange i'm supposed to give you oxygen you give me back carbon dioxide and if this doesn't happen then of course then glucose which is a main energy source for the cells will be possible to be metabolized or burnt either with oxygen or without oxygen but like any fire fires burn better with oxygen and in terms of glucose metabolism you can burn or metabolize glucose without glucose without oxygen and for every one glucose molecule you'll create two molecules of atp which is adenosine triphosphate which is like an energy source for the cells so one glucose gives two energy currency 
But if you burn or metabolize glucose in the presence of oxygen, you get 38 ATP, which is 19 times as much energy just by getting oxygen into cells. So what do you have to do to get oxygen into cells? You have to breathe less, not more. And of course, cancer thrives in the absence of oxygen. It's not to say that breathing more than normal gives you cancer or oxygen in the cells prevents cancer, but it just happens that cancer cells grow very quickly even without oxygen and they love sugar because they burn mm -hmm. sugar very quickly. Mm. Whereas normal cells grow very quickly and easily in the presence of oxygen and low sugar, cancer cells grow very easily in the presence of high sugar and low oxygen. So what you're doing by not breathing so much is you're making your body become very hungry for more food and probably more sugar and probably making the possibility that cancer cells can thrive really easily. And if you look at it, if you think about what's important in the body, what we need for on, ongoing long-term health is as good and healthy a cardiovascular system as possible for pretty much healing every disease. But even considering things like cancer, where does cancer come? Cancer comes in the places where blood flows least. It comes in places like your lungs, your brain, your bone marrow, your stomach, your colon, your genitals, the, you know, the, uh, the gonads, so the uterus and the testes. But cancer comes least in places where there's most blood flow, like your heart. How often do people hear of heart cancer? Mm. And of course, good blood flow is only going to be useful for you if your body can heal. And when can the heart, when can the body heal best? When your immune system works well. But when your immune system works well is when you're in a calming state. But your blood will flow best when your heart rate stays low. Because if your heart rate is high and that's what's making the blood flow, then you are also in a state of flight or fight, which turns off your immune system. So what we really want is to encourage blood flow while being very relaxed. And that's the function of pranayama, the art of getting blood to move through your cells very, very easily, because what it does, the less you breathe, it opens up blood vessels and it calms your nerves. So it actually acts in two ways to help you uh, achieve the function of yoga, which is to improve uh, the circulation and to keep you calm.